Thank you, everybody. I am Bradford Hutchinson. I was born in Elliott Hall, and I'm very encouraged by the turnout tonight. I'm very encouraged, very encouraged by everything that I've heard tonight. I've heard some excellent stuff. I've been working on some advertising lines for next year's promotions. I'll confess 2015. Okay, maybe not bigger than ever, but better than ever. And this year, no riots, folks. I got sober in 1991. I'm still sober. Pumpkin Fest started in 1991, as you've heard. It's still going on. We really have two situations here. One is Pumpkin Fest itself. Pumpkin Fest 2014 was the best Pumpkin Fest ever by far. I spent most of it down at the footprint. Two o'clock Saturday afternoon, I went down to Wilcox Terrace in time to watch New Hampshire State Police coming from Winchester Street. Keen police come in from Davis Street. They split a huge crowd of over a thousand drunken, drugged out college party scene crowd. It was, I couldn't believe it. I went back down to Pumpkin Fest. I saw our police and fire and EMTs do an excellent job. So the two situations we have, Pumpkin Fest, better than ever. About 30,000 car lit jack o' lanterns. 50, 60, 70,000 people. 50, 60, 70,000 people at the Footprint of Pumpkin Festival for the best pumpkin fest ever. The speaker who went before me, I can appreciate that thankfully tiny minority opinion in the community. That must be respected. If you were in a butter or property owner in a college party scenario, if you suffered damage or injury or distress, I am deeply, deeply sorry for that. It wasn't because of pumpkin fest. Come and find me. I will help you. I'll do what I can. I will listen to you. We can't shut down Pumpkin Fest because it's who we are. It's what we do, and it's how we do it. One minute. We need to come together as a community like we're doing tonight. I want to encourage Professor Ann Hewitt, the college president and the college community. Let's have this meeting in this room every month until Pumpkin Fest comes again. Let's keep doing this. Let's keep coming together. Let's keep speaking. Let's keep listening. Let's keep working. Let's make Pumpkin Fest 2015 okay. Maybe not bigger than ever, but better than ever. And this year, no riots, folks, because our police kept the footprint safe. There was no trouble, no incidents, no serious injuries at the footprint. The college party scene riots, hanging outside agitators, drunk and drunk college students, like the miscreants, that clown cult college on Leverett Street, we've got Bozo the Clown here tonight. We're always going to have that. We can step up our police and security. We will shut down the riots in 2015. No riots next year, kids. Pumpkin Fest 2015, okay, maybe not bigger, better than ever, and no riots. This is who we are. This is what we do. This is how we do it. Pumpkin Fest 2015, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. God bless you all. Shine page itself with its own words has left this decision rather clear. 
The statement reads, we, the Board of Let It Shine, are only interested in producing another event if it's supported by the local community, if it's safe for the families that participate, the surrounding neighborhoods, and all of our first responders. The community is less supportive. Over the past four years, it's proven less safe for these surrounding neighborhoods, and all of our first responders have been left at risk. The college recently published a report about their economic impact on both the city and state. We are aware of this, and we thank the college for as much economic help as they offer. But the report could also continue on to discuss the amount of financial impact that's on the negative side if it were a balanced report. The behavior of students and their guests over the last five years is another example of the financial loss that we do suffer. The higher impact on economics is important, but to us locals, the impact is more when you look at the negative side of things. A lot of people say they don't want the weekend to end for festival because they don't want to be held hostage during that weekend by the activities of the college students. But the truth is, we're held hostage the majority of the year when they are here. To walk Main Street at night with the foliage and the lights after dusk, it's beautiful. Until you run around the corner and run into the misbehaving students that you do see. A drive down Winchester Street should be rather easy, but it's become very challenging and less than appealing. The city has a mission and value statement. Many may be aware. Its motto is voice. Value everyone, obtain public input, inform the public, continue to assess facilities and infrastructure, and establish priorities. And the mission ends with a statement. Voice all the time, every day, in everything we do. Prove this mission One correct or rewrite it. The city also implemented a community visioning process, 1,200 members, and they say that in 2028, we have strategically managed our community's growth, maintaining its small town character and friendly and inviting atmosphere. We've created a community that supports the health, safety, and wellness of its citizenry. I challenge this view of 2028 with how we look in 2014. Some numbers you all need to be aware of, and you may see them in what they handed out tonight. In five years, what our city budget has offered is a 52% increase in the amount that is given to help with the festival. Over the same five years, there's a 20% increase in the cost of law enforcement needed to cover this weekend. The two combined, a 31% increase in our city budget. We pay this. Students don't. 15 seconds to wrap To the fire department and the police department, an exemplary effort on your behalf, same as years past. But keep fighting for your city. The committees show them how strenuous this is for you, the excessive staffing and exhausting efforts that you all go through. We experience it when you can't respond in time. Many have said that the footprint is safe. It Jack, was, Jack, but it was at risk. We'll have to get to the turn in the remainder of the remarks, please. I, I, <laughs> I, I feel only a little bit guilty about holding this to time. We still have 16 folks who wish to come to the microphone. Dan from McCulloch, if you would work your way forward. And now, Anita. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anita Carol Logan. I live at 199 Main Street, which is the Berkshire Collins House Museum on the corner of Winchester and Maine. And I'd like to preface my statement by thanking the college, administration, city officials, and students who have done the work um, of all these improvements that have been made that are listed on the handout that we received tonight. I'd also like to say that um, what I'm going to report on is just a fraction of the students that are here at the college. Um, I have lived in an apartment in a museum for 15 years with my husband, and we have witnessed a definite escalation in rowdy behavior, um, especially within the past few years. Pretty much every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night when school is in session, big groups of students head up town, yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs, usually pretty filthy comments, uh, going well into the early mornings of the, at early hours of the morning. Um, on Sunday mornings, we're faced with trash on the museum wall on the sidewalk and the green space out to Main Street. The museum has endured vandalism and theft over the years. 
I will note that there has been an improvement in this that I've noticed since um, the pumpkin festival this year. So things are improving. Um, but October 18th wasn't an isolated event. There were out of control parties. Last year in 2013, there was a riot after the Red Sox won the World Series in 2013. Um, I think that um, this behavior can be controlled. Also, on the afternoon of the pumpkin, pumpkin Festival on the 18th, there were lines of people waiting from the roundabout up to Davis Street, consisting of families with young children and infants who are elderly people. This was just a few hundred yards around the corner from the riot. And if the riot squad hadn't controlled that mob, they would have come around the corner into those lines and it would have been really disastrous. I think this is a pivotal event. I think that we can work together to change these things and I would like to work with the students and the administration to do that. I do have some suggestions that I'll write in comment. Comment for the center for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Anita. Deb Miller, if you could work your way to a microphone. Next to the stage.
no real opinion on whether pumpkin fest should continue or not continue because I'm mesmerized on how downtown is just a couple of blocks and yet you could have thousands and thousands of people in one corner having one experience at just a block and a half away, have thousands and thousands of people controlled by just a couple of hundreds SWAT team trained people in one area and that's not what's on the news. When there are natural disasters and um, campus tragedies, they're comparing one place to another and they're saying, well, this was handled so well and this wasn't handled that well. And yet what you hear on the news is pumpkin fest riot, right, King Manchur, and, and not how phenomenally well that horrible situation was handled so that people could, 80 year olds could dance to Beatles tunes and people could be getting proposed to and little children could be getting their faces painted two blocks away and not even know that these things were happening and no one was gunned or knifed or, because you know there had to be weapons there with people that were that drunk and coming from out of state and all over the place for the point of being rowdy and flipping cars. And somehow a couple of hundred well-trained emergency people came to our city to keep this festival going on and only one small street had to be closed for a little while. Why is that not being promoted? Our city is kind of disenfranchised and our students have been disenfranchised and the small percentage of students that were involved are giving the rest of the school the brunt of all of this trouble. And there are so many students here that are a vital part of our community. One minute. Understood. And, and they need our help. They were frightened. And they need our help. And they're away from their homes and they're incurring a lot of debt. And they have goals and they have dreams. And they're somehow going to go all over the country. And they have to have the pride to say that they graduated from our state school here. And we need to have more students want to come here. And I...